program, it's made by a group of youth and youth workers concerned about the road for children and families living in the area. Limehouse Causeway forms part of a rat run, a shortcut by commuters travelling from the city to the suburbs of Essex in order to avoid the congested A13. The rat run goes along the highway through Narrow Street and then into Limehouse Causeway. and cars an hour pass along it. Then the route crosses West Ferry Road on the way into Poplar High Street through West India Dock Road. Finally, it rejoins the A13 at Cotton Street. Limehouse Causeway is the most dangerous part of this route because it is the part that runs through a densely populated residential area with a council estate on either side of the road. It also has a tight concealed bend. There are no traffic lights, pedestrian crossings or other speed restrictions. It is at this most dangerous point that children have to cross to get from the primary school to their homes and to the school's annex. The aim of this program is to show how unsuitable Limehouse Causeway is for the volume of commuter traffic and should instead be seen as the centre of St Vincent's estate. Now 3.30pm in Limehouse Causeway. School has just finished at Cyril Jackson Primary School. Parents are having to come to collect their children and take them home. As you can see, this road cuts right across St Vincent's estate, where the children in the school come from. I wonder if car owners driving along these shortcuts ever consider whose lives they may and dangerous. Despite occasional police speed, they speed along, often at 50 to 60 miles per hour. Children from the estate are the victims of accidents. Only 32% of its households own their own car, compared to 63% for outer London, where most commuters come from, while Havering out in Essex, 1%. Now pause at St Vincent's estate. Here, only 16% of households are. Only do very few families on St Vincent's own their own car, but far more of them have small children who have to cross this busy road with no zebra crossing. We talk to people who live and work in the area and who suffer as a result of the rat run. A campaign should be started by local residents to press the traffic authority to close Limehouse Causeway and for the LDDC 
to spend money on environmental improvements which make the road part and parcel of St Vincent's estate. Tread on his fingers. <laughs> Today is the event to have a disabled people. And it's been run in West India. It's largely supported by Shadwell Basin, the project there, uh, Tower Hamlets uh, Recreation Department and Tower Hamlets Sports Association for Disabled. We've had input from the police boat, from Massey Shore, the historic fire boat, and the disabled barge challenge. There's approximately 150 people taking part.
Tahamit's picture loan scheme was set up in 1981. Pictures in the collection are at present exhibited for three weeks, three times a year in Tahamit's libraries. The main exhibition being the library in Bancroft Road. The exhibition is now split between Central and either Whitechapel Library next door to Orgate's Tube or Limehouse Library on Commercial Road. This is partly due to the increased size of the collection, but also to the desire to make the scheme more widely known throughout the borough. While the exhibition is on, members of the scheme reserve the picture they would like to borrow and collect it at the end of the exhibition. The pictures are all original works, paintings, prints, drawings and photographs, and almost all of them are by local artists who live or have a studio in the borough. The aim of the scheme is to enable people living or working in Tower Hamlets to borrow an original work of art for three months for a minimal hire fee of £1.75. Members of the loan scheme include organisations who may want pictures to put up in their place of work. Dr. Center's social clubs, for example, have borrowed in the past. However, the majority of borrowers are individuals like Alison. Sometimes after three months, a borrower feels that they really want to keep the picture and they are then able to buy it from the council. Very recently, we have set up a scheme whereby borrowers can pay for their picture on an instalment basis, spreading the costs rather than paying in one lump sum, which is often difficult. This has already led to a big loss. With the money from sales, we are able to buy new pictures to add to the collection, increasing the choice of pictures for people to borrow.
across Millwall Dock lay the remains of a well-loved land. The Bluebells Plough. The last stages of its demolition have been going on for some time. took over the men's dress and they used to push the flag out on the left side of the sheet. Down the sheet I'd put the flag out into the lorries. Even sometimes down the lorries and help drive the stuff it. Very tough to put them out in those days. Was built in 1938. But that floor, as I say, was covered with girls and machines. The girls used to go out to and they had to play their white old grooves. And if my memory serves me correctly, the girls that used to do the actual cutting uh, down to the cartons and sending them down the sheet to the stack. visiting the post, the first of all borrow a white oval, and the men that used to wear trilbers or some sort of head I do remember that he disappeared, but then he wore hairnets in the hill and the back of his own machinery. But that day was covered with the girls and machines. to call it the packet of wood vines or the fire of wood vines. And I say it's heartbreaking as you go by to see it disappearing. It's a end of an era, if you like. And it's like, to me, it's like the end of the Isle of Dogs as it was. I'm very sad.
that in 1981 the Conservative government wound up the partnership of local council. Despite much local opposition, instead they created the LDDC unelected meeting in secret headed by a property developer. So far the LDDC have spent over 200 million of taxpayers' money, most of it on making land an attractive private investment for developers to build expensive houses at prices local people can't afford. So Winston. You set up Icon Records and not go to some established label. Well really we wanted to um, set up a label so that uh, we'd be in control of what we wanted to release and that we'd be able to say what went out on our label and also it gives us the freedom to basically do what we want to do rather than being controlled by um, a major label telling us what to use and what to record and what songs to put out as singles, etc. I've heard something about Thump. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Thump? Well, Thump is the uh, Tower Hamlets Union of Musicians and Performers, mm. which is a local cooperative which uh, attempts to provide a service for sort of local bands and uh, tries to arrange gigs and things like that. They're putting on this music week that uh, we're using our multimedia show for. It's not actually going to be the whole show, but just a part of it. So you'll be able to get a taster of what's to come.
well, any local musicians within the Tower Hamlets area can become involved. If you want to, um, to join, the best place to go is to the Steam Room Studios, which is uh, upstairs at Poplar Baths on the East India Dock Road. And if you go up there, you can get information and uh, fill in a form.